Welcome to another Living Your Spark second half episode. And today I'm coming to you super high on life because I am fresh off my two-day retreat in Sedona and it was literally more than I could have ever asked for. It was magical, magical. It is truly um, my dream coming true better than I ever thought was possible. And that's what is, is happens. It was what happens when you have dreams, when you have dreams and you write them down and you think they're going to unfold a certain way. And then we only, we're limited. Our, our ability to dream is limited in a way from our experiences. And sometimes we can dream through vicariously through other people because we've seen, but that's part of our experiences. Um, and when things unfold that aren't in your experiences, of course they become your new experiences, but that's when you, when you follow a dream, the universe always over delivers, I feel like, and it definitely did in this case. So I'll be doing an episode uh, coming up, probably sharing some things about the retreat. One thing I really learned about myself, which was really great. It was a lesson I needed, but it was so, so amazing. And I wished it was longer actually, but I was uh, a little short on sleep. So my, uh, I got a little, uh, my immune system got a little, I think exposed because I wasn't getting my proper sleep. And I do think I missed taking my vitamins a couple of days. I'm a big vitamin proponent with vitamin C, especially. And I think I missed a couple of days being so caught up in the busyness of it all, but it was amazing. And, um, I, uh, am here maybe a little nasally, but I'm still here. This episode is a little late. I like to normally record my episodes and publish them on Tuesday. And I, every intention of publishing or recording this before I left to go on my trip, which didn't happen. So I took my microphone and my webcam. <laughs> I took all my equipment with me thinking, oh, I'll just do it when I'm in Sedona. And guess what? I never had the chance. I was so focused on the people there and what we were doing and the content I was delivering that um, I was just like, the podcast episode will just have to be done when it gets done. And so now I'm home and there'll just be two episodes back to back. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> I could even skip it, but I I really wanted to do this one because it it it, it kind of seeds um the what the next episode is, uh because it's with my two daughters who have got, navigated some change, and so I thought it would I want to talk about change and my tips for navigating unwanted change before they their episode came on, and I've had this whole kind of change theme, and so I think um change we just have to be willing to change change is good I want the whole conversation around change to be a positive one, a hopeful one, a, a very optimistic one, uh, because even unwanted change is change that so many times I've talked to people, unwanted change turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to them. So I thought it was worth me sharing some tips on how I've navigated change and, uh, and a good prequel to the episode that'll be coming with my, my two daughters. So without further ado, uh, thanks for tuning in and let's listen to my tips on navigating unwanted change. Today's episode is a continuation of our conversation about change. Last week, it was more along the lines of when you change your mind, it's okay. You don't have to stick to a decision. You don't have to stick to something that you decided on doing if life circumstances have changed, if you have changed, if you have new information, it's okay to change. Don't stay in a life or on a path that isn't right for you. We evolve and we need to be able to roll with that evolvement. We need to roll with our expansion because that's what it is. If we don't evolve, if we don't change decisions we previously made for totally other reasons, then we limit ourselves and we stay in our comfort zone. So today is about change, but change when change 
is bad or perceived as bad is change that you might not want. It's forced on you for some reason. It's not up to you to change your mind. <laughs> Somebody pulls the rug out from under your feet, so to speak. And one of the reasons I want to talk about it, because I, I think everything about change, I, I just want you to reframe change as good, that change is always good. And even if you perceive it as bad, it could be and likely is that the change is happening for you. And you might not see that or know that. The When the, I think about change that's bad, life circumstances that cause that feeling usually are somebody gets laid off from a job, layoffs fired, kind of the same thing. Although layoffs, you can say, oh, the company needed to cut a certain amount. I remember I got laid off once and 25% of the company got laid off. And 25% of the people, that's probably some good people that were let go. So getting fired is really a, a, a harder than sometimes a layoff, but you're still rejected. You're still let go. You're still, things change and you don't want them to change regardless. So if a job shift changes, that isn't something that you decided to do. That's what that category is. Could be that you get dumped that somebody decides to not stay married to you anymore, decides to break up with you, a long-term relationship, even a short-term that you think is going to go somewhere. So those are two buckets that I think of. Uh, another one might be that you have to move. I had a student and her husband moved or his job changed and she had to move. And it was away from a place she had lived and raised her kids and lived most of her life. And it was, it was a big jolt, bad change. Again, the perception at the time. So I want to talk about that. And one of the treats and the reason why I decided to, I want to do a solo episode first, because I want to give you some tips. I actually have five, as it turned out, five tips for navigating unwanted change and they came up in my mind as when I've had to go through unwanted change and how I felt and what I felt helped me through it. And I wanted to share that with you. But I also have done a recorded episode. I recorded it before I went on my retreat last weekend with my two daughters. So you get to meet my two daughters I had one of them on a long time ago to talk about crystals because she has an interest in crystals. She got certified in crystal healing and she got me interested in crystals. And so I think I did an episode quite some time ago with her on that. But she's gone through some unwanted changes recently. And my other daughter, my younger daughter, they're only 18 months apart, so they're very close in age, but she has gone through some difficult to navigate changes because they were wanted, but it was a big shift for her. And one was a case of moving from the town where she grew up, but she's almost 40 and her small children. So worried about what the move was going to do to them and then sending her kid off to kindergarten. And this came up as well this time of year because people are having many people are experiencing empty nest for the first time. An empty, an empty nest is funny because it happens over a period of years, usually. Then when it hits you, it knocks you like with a right hook. And I felt like when my kids left to go to college from high school, it was not the real empty nest because they kept coming back. They would come back for holidays. They still had their room. It was still lively. Their friends would still come over when they were home. And so even though they were gone for parts of the year, they were home for the summers. And, and when one left, the other one was still there for a while. And so they were two years apart in school. So the, to, for me, the empty nest really happened when they moved out for good. But for many, it's quite an adjustment to go from that every day activity, being there and having all the high school activities. My kids played high school sports. So if your kids did that, it was quite the, the, the life. I mean, your life was filled up with 
kids' activities. And regardless, usually of what they did, they were there and, and they were in your life and you were doing things with them. And so I also had weekends. They were in club sports. And so we had weekends and every Memorial weekend was a soccer tournament. Every Labor Day weekend was a soccer tournament. And that, that's an unwanted change, right? You have to shift from this active, involved mother, parent, to now that is a void in your life. And how do you navigate that unwanted change? So if you are someone who has said goodbye to a child, sent them off to either their first year of college or another year of college, or even they've moved out for good, then my heart is with you. I get what you're going through. And these tips might help you. Number one, be optimistic. I had the gift of an optimistic mother. I like to say that has served me well in life. Glass is always half full. The my I remember my mom used to say, and I, I hated it, but it stuck. If something bad happened to me, she said, well, let's just make lemonade out of those lemons. <laughs> and I probably really didn't even get it uh, because I was so irritated when she would say that. But it is a quote that has served me and I've thought of many times in life because I don't like lemons. Maybe you like lemons. I do not like lemons. I don't put lemons on anything, although I know lemons are good for you, but I do like lemonade. And so it's like, okay, how can I take this thing I don't like and make it into something that I like? What a great attitude to have. And I think some people are unfortunate to have a pessimistic parent. This is a model that you are exposed to day in and day out. So if you are someone who has had a pessimistic parent and you sometimes look at things with the class as half empty, th just be aware of that. It, it's not your fault. It was something you were exposed to. And our brains are very malleable when we're young. We model things. Things are imprinted in our brain. And so you can become optimistic. You can, you can get rid of those memorized, as they say, emotions. We talked about this at the retreat. But yeah, these emotions are kind of running on autopilot inside of us. And so when we experience something unwanted, if we have this pessimistic mindset that we've adopted, then yeah, we're going to, we're going to have a harder time. So start to be aware. Am I going to the negative? Am I going to like what I don't have versus what I do have? Uh, and, and you want to recognize what you do have. And that's the glass is half full because then you're like, oh, it's going to get better than this. Uh, I love the, also the joke. I think it's a joke. I, and I, I always, when I retell stuff, I usually don't do them justice. I screw them all up, but I will do my best. So this little boy wants a pony really bad. He's very excited, very optimistic little boy. He, he goes into a, his bedroom. There's probably a lot more story leading up to it, but I'll just get to the point. But he goes into a bedroom and in his bedroom, it's full of horse shit. And he is so excited. You know how manure smells. Probably you've been to a farm before. And so it's like putrid. It's like, oh my God, that smells terrible. He runs in and he's digging in the manure and he's digging and he's digging. And he's so happy. And he's throwing it up in the air and he's getting all messy. And somebody says to him, well, why are you so excited? That's a, that's a bunch of poop that you're digging through. And he looks up and he says, well, if there's a bunch of horse poop here, there must be a horse in here somewhere. So I love that. I love that joke because it just goes to show you that attitude is everything. So be optimistic. Think about the positives that even though this is an unwanted change, what could be a positive? What is the gift of that unwanted change? What will allow you to shift that needs to be shifted? 
what path will it take you on that could be different and could it really help you expand? Maybe you've been getting comfortable in life uh, and maybe you need to stir things up a little bit. And if you aren't stirring them up on your own, then the universe might need to stir them up for you. And I wholeheartedly believe that if we get really stagnant and we get into a routine and we're not living to our fullest potential, the universe will intervene and pull the rug out from under us and, and get us back on track with whatever that our end path should be. There's too many stories of people who are famous who went like hit rock bottom first and then climbed up to the top, which is where they wanted to be in the first place. But they were just denying themselves their greatness. So that's number one, be optimistic. Number two, get present and focus on what is good in your life. Back to what I was saying, some people find it very hard to find the good in, in their life. They just want to focus on what's bad, play the victim. I recently had a guest on the podcast and she said, and I hear this many times with these people who have pivoted in life and they get tired of playing the victim. Once they finally realize that's what they've been doing and it's only hurting themselves, it is attention seeking, which is why people do it. But they don't recognize it for that until one day they wake up and they're like, you know, I'm just playing victim, but it's just keeping me as a victim. And so how can I overcome this and not be a victim anymore? And so this number two tip is just sitting with yourself and looking around and seeing what you see. You can find things. Just by looking around, doing a 360 view of what, what are you looking at? What do you see? And the things you see all have a story. So when you look at something, what does it remind you of? The person that gave it to you, the place you were when you got it. Those are all things to be grateful for. So look at the things, look at the positive things that are around you. And, and it can be as simple as my heart is beating. My breath, I, I don't even have to think about breathing. I just breathe. Isn't that great? How often we breathe. And if we had to think about it all the time and, and really expend energy to breathe, it just happens. Isn't that great? You can feel things. Maybe you have a dog laying next to you, like I do. He's on the floor. I can't reach him quite yet, but he's usually on the couch with me when I'm on my couch. He has fur like a plush stuffed animal. All I have to do is reach over and run my hands through the most softest, silkiest fur. I'm so lucky to have a live stuffed animal. <laughs> What can you feel? What can you smell? Right now I have a cold. So I came home with a cold from Sedona. So can't smell much, but what can you be present to that your senses are picking up? So think about what is good and what you have in your life. Unwanted change. Yeah, it might suck. But what doesn't suck? And let's focus on that. And to add on before I move on to number three, we tend, and why I say get present and focus on what you have, because our mind wants to go to the past, which is if you have an unwanted change, likely could be, what did I do wrong? What can I fix? What is wrong with me? Why was I rejected? Why do we have to do this? I don't want to do this. No, no, no. Dwell, dwell, dwell on what is and can't probably be changed. But the future can be changed. 
I think it starts by getting present with what is and what to be thankful for and grateful for, because that puts you in a place of energy that is attractive. And when you dwell and when you say this sucks and when you focus on anger and you focus on depression and anxiety, that is all bad energy. And you got to shift into good energy. And the best way to do that is with gratitude. And when we think about the future, we think about the worst case scenario. So that's why I don't want you to go there, but you can create a best case scenario. And so that's what I'm going to talk about next. But when you get present and focus on what is, you get out of your head and into your heart. So that's the idea there. Tip three is take action. Don't just sit around and be a baby. <laughs> That's all I can think about. Don't sit around and be a baby. Put your big girl pants on and get out there and take some action. And I think starting by making a list of pros and cons is the best first step. I called my friend. I remember when I got laid off and I think it was my first layoff. I've had two, but I was working for a company. This is the company that 25% of the workforce was laid off. And I was blindsided because I thought I was doing a good job. I didn't know the company was going to be doing layoffs. The funny thing about this layoff is that I wasn't happy in the job. It just wasn't the right job for me. And I'd already started conversations with a friend who I had met there and who had left. And they were hiring at her job. And so I had already started a conversation with her, although I hadn't given her my resume yet, but I had already started a conversation with her. And so the morning of the layoff, she called me and she heard through the grapevine that we were going to have a layoff. She worked in another company. I don't know how she got the inside scoop, but I was like, oh. and so I had no idea, no idea. And Within probably 15 or 20 minutes, there was a knock on my cubicle and, you know, Stu wants to see you in his office. He was the vice president. I think his name was Stu. And I was just so hurt. It was my boss and him laying me off. But I also remember at that job that we had to sign in when we came in to work. This is a corporate job. It was like regular corporate America. We had to sign in like punching a clock, only we didn't have a clock. We had this book and you had to sign in when you came in. You had to sign out when you went out to lunch, sign in when you came back from lunch and sign out when you left for the day. So that job I got fired from and wasn't that good. <laughs> you think about how regimented it was. It was totally not my cup of tea. And talk about having this feeling that you're not trusted as an employee. It's like, you don't trust me. Yeah, I had to like sign in and sign out. And so that was not aligned with my values. So unwanted change happened for me, even though at the time I was more worried about, I don't have the money. We, it's a two income family that needs both salaries. And, you know, your mind just goes to like desperation, anxiety, rejection. But I took action immediately took action. I went back to my desk and I called my friend and I said, yep, you're right. We had a layoff and I got fired. I'm going to do my resume. I'm going to print it out right now. And I think I had already gotten it ready. I just hadn't given it to her. I printed it out. I don't remember exactly whether she came to get it. I dropped it off, whatever. But that day I turned over my resume to her. And within a few weeks, I went to work for her company and I ended up being at that company for three years. And it was a lot of good experience that I got at that, at that company. So you just need to take action. Tip four, use your time wisely. So tip three was take action, take inspired action. Don't go home and sulk in your tea bags or whatever, sulk in your silky pajamas, just take action. Pull your big girl pants up, take action and and do what you got to do. But number four is kind of the opposite, but it's use that time wisely. When I say take action, it's not like go scroll Facebook 
and look for happy quotes, <laughs> although that might make you feel better for a bit. Don't spend a lot of time doing that. Don't play mindless games. Don't binge and waste time on things that are going to keep you stuck in, in action or not in positive action. But one of the things that might be contradictory is to, when I say use your time wisely, is that's really the tip, is not only take the right action, don't take wasted actions, but get silent. Take actions that quiet the mind and help you get downloads. And when I say a download, it's like a message. It's like something somewhere knows more than you and it wants to help you. And these messages we get when we're busy and when we're stressed and when we're go, 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 we don't hear the messages. We're blocked from the messages and we lose our creativity. And when you get silent, it opens up your creativity. It opens up your heart and you, it helps you get out of your head and into your heart. So that's really important is to get silent. And, and when I talked about tip two and this overlaps somewhat, getting pre present and being grateful and being thankful for what is and, and really focusing on those things, that is not really a doing activity. It's, it's a focusing, it's a, a getting quiet activity, but get silent and stay away from activities that won't get you to where you want to go. But in addition to staying silent, when I say use your time wisely, make a plan because it's very important to, you know, we tend to, when we're very, very busy, at least I do, I like to have a plan and a structure because I got to get it all done and I got to get it all fit in, right? When we don't have a lot to do, maybe if you've lost your job or you're undergoing this unwanted change, the tendency is to just kind of flail around a bit. But flailing around won't give you the, the clarity you need. It won't give you the inspiration you need. It won't give you the, and you might have lost some confidence along the way of getting this unwanted change. When you use your time wisely and you make a little structure of your day to accomplish some things, it reinstates your confidence. So having a plan, a little structure about getting things done, and it doesn't have to be a lot of things, it makes you feel productive. And if you don't have a job and you've lost your job or the rug has been pulled out on your feet and the yesterday that you had is totally out the window and you've got to create a new today, sometimes it's really helpful to build your own structure that you need to make yourself feel better. And like I said, more productive. And when I say make a plan, the plan doesn't have to be like fix this friggin' mess that I'm in, but it can be things that are positive for you, like exercise, maybe add some exercise in, call an old friend, call somebody that you worked with, like I did, that might have an idea or might have somebody else. You know, networks are an amazing thing. A network, call one person and they lead you to another person and then they lead you to another person. It's really a great thing. So try to build some new habits. Maybe one of the things you do is reflect on, in using your time wisely, reflect on some of the habits you wanna break that weren't serving you and maybe led you to this unwanted change. And definitely do some meditation. I think that is something everybody should do because that really helps calm the brain and get you into your body, which is really important. All right. So the last item, number five, is have faith. Believe you will be okay because you will. Very, very, very few people, unwanted changes have been the end unless it's a self-inflicted end. And it sounds horrible, but actually that could potentially happen. I don't think it'll happen if you follow these tips. It only happen if you stay in that negative energy, seek help because you're important. You're important to this world and you are in this dark place potentially because you just haven't found the right path. And somehow it's been blocked for you. It's like the thorn bush is over the front of the path. 
and you might need some help. And that help could be an Indiana Jones who has the right tools to get through that sticker bush. So think of it that way. If you can't navigate this unwanted change on your own, please, please seek help. But number five is have faith that you will find what you need. The next thing will lead you with the right mindset to exactly where you're meant to go. This happened for you. You are where you are because you needed either a lesson or you needed to shift out of that place that wasn't taking you to where you were supposed to be going. And so it's a good thing. I always like to think these unwanted changes are unwanted to us as us in this current state. But once you shift, once you start to get aware why it's going to free you, this unwanted change, to do the things that maybe were scaring you and that you've avoided, and now you have the opportunity for. So believe that you will be okay. Get out of your head and into your heart. You can also, and I think this is a really great idea, plan a trip because I know that many people who get laid off, the first thing they think of is not, let me go spend some money. You know, the thing they think is, let me hoard all this money so I don't lose it. But the problem is, if you have faith and you know you're going to be okay, you would go on a trip. If you didn't have faith, you would hoard all your money. So when you hoard all your money and you think, it's going to run out, it's all going to run out. And then I'll be really in trouble. Well, that alone is a mindset that is not of faith. Because if you had faith, you wouldn't worry about it. No faith, you're desperate. You're clinging on to the things that you feel you need to cling on to for security purposes. But what if you took a trip and you met somebody who had the perfect dream job on your trip? What if you sat on an airplane next to somebody and they ended up having the, the perfect job? Or you go on your trip and you're laying on the beach and you get this huge download of something that you never thought of that you need to do You because you have that downtime now. I remember I took a trip. I was really worried about money and I didn't have the knowledge I have now of having faith and the universe is helping you, but I did go on a trip because I knew I had time off. And I thought, I don't ever have the opportunity to go visit my parents. My kids are young. Let me go spend a few days with my parents who lived in Florida at the time. And so I lived in Virginia. So I packed up my kids and I think we spent 10 days with my parents, which I never would have been able to do if I had a job because I didn't have 10 days vacation. And it was amazing. It was an amazing experience that will never be forgotten. And I still share stories about that trip because it was great. So sometimes doing the opposite of what you think you should be doing is really the best thing you can do. And like I said, sometimes doing nothing is better than something. Using your time wisely can be as much about the nothing as the something. When you have faith, there's this contentment, there's this peace, there's this confidence, this inner confidence that doesn't exist when you're in a state of anxiety, when you're in a state of depression and fear, when you're trying to navigate unwanted change, those are often the predominant feelings. So those are my five tips. And if you want me to run through them one more time. Summary is be optimistic. Glass is half full. Number two, get present and focus on what is good in your life. Focus on the simple things. Three, take action. Four, use your time wisely. And that includes doing nothing. Getting silent is a very good do-nothing activity. And then five, 
have faith. Have faith. It will all work out. Believe you will be okay because I know you will be okay. It is meant to be. Whatever is happening to you is meant to be for you. Embrace it. Be thankful for it. And follow what your heart is telling you. And you can't go wrong. Thank you so much for tuning into the Living Your Spark Second Half podcast. If you'd like to watch my guest interviews, you can find the video version of this podcast on my Not Your Average Grandma YouTube channel. Also, you can check out what I have going on at the moment by going to my website at notyouraveragegrandma.com or find me on Instagram or Facebook at Not Your Average Grandma. If you like this episode, please mention it to a friend and don't forget to leave a review so I know the topics you like best and can bring you more of that content in upcoming episodes. Last but not least, remember to always listen to that inner voice that will never steer you wrong and make living from the most sparked place possible your biggest priority. When we do that, we make the world a better place.